Hi, good day. My name is Glenn Robertson. I'm here at the African Musicians Trust um, offices and studio. Um, we are busy compiling a book which will be called Honoring the Fathers of Jazz in Our City and Establishing the Sons and the Daughters. And uh, this is just a, a document which we have put in at this point, just telling a little bit about the musicians of Cape Town. There's the late great Zane Adams, Robbie Jansen, and we have with us at the studio here in Claremont, Mr. George Werner, who has worked with the likes of Zane, he has worked with the likes of Robbie Jansen, he has worked with the likes of Errol Dyers, uh, Ezra Nukana, Duke Nukana, He's been a, a, a veteran, or he is a veteran, shall I say. He's one of the guys who, who can tell us a little bit about the history of the music of Cape Town. And so, George Werner, welcome to the African Musicians Trust. It's good to have you here. Thanks, Green. We're going to ask George a couple of questions, because I, I know that there is a, 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 a strong interest in Cape Town, the music of Cape Town, the compositions of Cape Town, and the musicians who have graced our stages in Cape Town. And George Werner is one of those guys who has worked with many, many musicians, and he has fathered, not physically, but in a musical sense, he has fathered many, many uh, young artists. Uh, George, I'm going to start right at the beginning. How did you get into music? What was your first introduction and at what age did you start with music? Probably birth. <laughs> <laughs> my, my mom bought me a, a plastic drum, and a plastic trumpet. Yes. I think I was two or three years old. Wow. And so, so that was the, 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 the start or the interest in oh, music for you? Was, there was always music at home. Yeah. My mother was a music teacher. Okay. Um, Who was that? Mrs. Werner? That's good. And did she, did she teach at schools? She taught at schools, taught choirs and piano. Right. And she taught art as well. Okay. Fine art. And your dad was an attorney? Yep. Yeah. And so uh, you come, like I do, out of the old South Africa into the new. We've played... Uh, with each other, we played music we with played each other um, over the years. Um, but when did you seriously start? Uh, I think you, if I remember correctly, you started like Robbie Jansen with the guitar. Yep. Was that rhythm actually, and lead guitar? Actually, I started with piano. With piano, okay. At, at, um, at seven years old. At seven? Okay. But I hated it. <laughs> it was the music that I was being taught, which I right. Liked. It wasn't actually the bear now. But my mother, mother, she kind of knew that I had a love for music. Right. So, um, I think my first was actually in choirs at primary school. I was singing. Singing in choirs? Oh, choir, yeah. Wow. And then when I got to high school, she bought me a guitar. Right. And of course, the influence of the Beatles and Santana. Yes. And I was also listening to Wes Montgomery. So it was jazz, jazz rock. That type of thing. All, all those influences. And and who was, uh, I, I know that at that stage you met Trevor Parker. Trevor Parker. And, uh, and I actually played bass and guitar in Trevor had a, a number of garage bands. Right. So he would she was kind of one of my first teachers, really. Yeah. If, if, if you can look at it like that. But then, of course, in Cape Town, you had this external influence as well. Yeah. It was a garage band down the road. And on my way to the, the shop, about 400 meters away from home, right next to the shop, the um, Richard John Smith and the Triangles used to practice. Okay. And then of course you get these 
Christmas squires and the Topson. Yeah. I know within the church there used to be these lovely alto singers in the church. Right. I used to sit there and listen to them. Yeah. So the influences is varied. Varied. Yeah. And uh, you, so you, one of your first bands that you played with was which, which band? <coughs> was it Stitch? <laughs> okay. One, so, one, one of the first bands. One of the first bands, yeah. It was my, one of my first semi-professional bands. Yes, yes. I think we got paid, um, <laughs> don't, don't say how much 20, you got 20 paid. bucks a week. <laughs> There was a space across the um, Cape Sun, they were still building the Cape Sun. Yes, yes. And then some weeks and you and I would <laughs> go play. It, would, it only arrived with two or three people, although the band was a... Yes. I think it was a eight or nine piece Eight or nine piece band, band yes, yeah. So every week we had to decide, okay, the two of you go and play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <For> 20 <then. laughs> So. So it started with Stitch, and 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 then you you went into the professional music arena, and and no. you sp not yet. No. When when did you when did you well, go professional? In the trip, my mom suggested I go and study music. Right. And I said no. Then she suggested I go and study education. Right. And I said no. <laughs> Didn't want to do it too. Right. Because I've been paid 20 rand a key. Correct. You thought you would never survive. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually ended up studying telecommunication. Telecommunications? Yeah. Okay. And um, I worked for Tal Talcom for six years. And I, was, I was actually lecturing there as well. Right. When you met me, I was busy studying computer science. That's right. Because I actually That's got right. a bit G4. Yeah. Of, you can say GAT4. <laughs> bureaucracy. Yeah. And uh, I kind of got sucked into music then. Yes. And then I became a bit broke. <laughs> The only way I could get out of my bankruptcy was I was busy um, paying for my own studies. Studies, yeah. The only way I could get out of my bankruptcy was to become, earn some money yes. as a keyboard player. Right. That was with Isi Aruddin and Bernie Lawrence. That's right. Johnny yeah. Barges. Yes. And the band um, that was called what? Exit. Exit, that's right. And you guys played where? At that time it was at the village pub. Okay. That was Basil Basil yeah. Simons' is, is venue, yeah. But then you see very soon after I joined, he asked me would not like to go on the hotel circuit. Right. At that time, you know, they had the Sun International had all these casinos. Correct. So I said, okay, I'm gonna put the studies on hold. Right. They're still on hold. <laughs> it's still on hold 30 odd years later, 40 years later. And the weird thing is when I reflected back, uh, the stuff that my mum requested me do, you know, as a matric, I ended up doing. doing. That's right. So, she was a wise old bird. Yeah, no, she. They they always are, but we, but we never we never take the advice at the time. So, uh, so you so you you started playing as a keyboard player. You did the hotel circuit, and that was sort of doing covers and things. Yeah. And and then I know you went through a very um, uh, strong phase of working with the late great Winston Mankungu. Yeah. You worked with Winston. Where where was that? Well, uh, it's basically a, a kind of return to Cape Town in '87. Mm. I was out of the city for about four years. Right. And 
They called it the professional guys didn't really know me. It was only a guy like you. <laughs> so, on return, because I wanted to finish the studies. So That's right. On return, I actually got sucked in, uh, played um, District 6 of Musical. Yes. And next, then I ended up with a band called Horizon for six months. Yeah, I remember. That was with Pat, um, Pat Stevens, Pat and Stevens and Madiha. Ma no, no, Madiha sister. sister. Yeah. And, um, Kitch, Jean Pierre. Yes. And you, you guys played in Mitchell's Plane? Yeah, at the In on the Plane. In on the Plane, that's uh, right. Ridge, yes. But at the same moment, Basil Simons asked me to join Workforce. Workforce, yeah. yeah. And that was one of the yeah. hottest bands Cape Town has produced. Top bands and what they used to have on the Saturday afternoon was these regular jam sessions. Yes. So every Saturday in Ward Walk, Ezra and Lukana, Winston Makunku, um, the likes of everybody. Right. And that's how I ended up meeting these people. Yes. And eventually, I started playing with him. Yeah. But also with the education through. Um, the same moment I was teaching at the jazz workshop, yes. Burton Barrow asked me to come and help him out there. Right. I didn't want to do it, but he convinced me. Yes. And then Duke Mukana yeah. asked me to come and assist that map. Is That's that right, they had started MAPP, MAP, yeah. in, in Woodstock. Well, yeah, well, it was... Musical Arts Project, or...? No. Yeah. Musical Action for ah. People's Power, that was the first name. Musical Action for People's Power. Yeah, that yeah. was the first name. Okay. And that time it wasn't a school. Okay. It was a kind of a UDF type of... Movement. Movement. Yeah. <laughs> Where the musicians just go and buy that. People like um, Trevor Manuel. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they used to do fundraisers. Yes, yes. To assist. That's right. And that's that was the time when when Robbie was doing songs like Freedom, uh, yeah. all all yeah. of those uh, and what uh, what I call protest action songs. Yeah. yeah. And bands like Sabenza was there. Yes. I think Basil was probably the first guy to. Basil could see it. Yeah. Yeah. To kind of really change the the mindset of the musicians yeah the local guys right because his music was now at this more of this freedom type of thing mm, mm. i feel that basil and so benzo was really one of the pivotal bands that 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 caused us or caused uh, local musicians to to mm. move from from just doing the Chicago, Earth, Earth Wind and Fire and all of that, but to moving yeah. into doing their own stuff. Although and they, amazing. Although there were um, bands slightly before that, mm. like um, bands like Estudio, I don't even... Yes, of course, Russell Herman, uh, and, Carter Khan. And even um, Spirit's Rejoice, which was a kind Correct. of um, a old South African band. It wasn't right. just Cape Town. Was right, that, uh, it was so, Paul Peterson was yeah. part of Spirit's Rejoice yeah. at the time. But it was also guys from Durban. From Durban and, and Joburg, that's right. Um, Eastern Cape. But for me, Basil and so Benz was probably the one band that really kind of got the whole of all the Cape Town musicians to think, well, this is probably the direction yeah. we need to go. And, and we have got something that the world needs to hear yeah. musically. It was it was kind of political, yeah. In a way, and you look throughout the world, there were moments when the the politics of the world kind of steered the um, the direction that the arts would go. Correct. The and, and, Vietnam and, and, War created a, a lot of good music. Yeah. In the late sixties and early seventies. Yeah. The no, that's right absolutely true. Them. And 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 just so the musicians become almost prophetic voices yeah. for for politics and yeah. for the way things need to go. Basically, I, I 
call the musicians and the artists, I call them actually the conscience. Yes. Of, of the nation. Of the nation. So yeah. That's they nice. Try, they try and remind people. Correct. You know, if there's any thuggery going on yeah. in government, or I shouldn't speak about that now. <laughs> you can. <laughs> In case of coming back, um, then Duke took over MAP um, and it became a school. Okay. And he changed the name to Musical Action for People's Progress. Okay. He took that militancy and power. Yes, and changed yeah. it. People's Progress, yeah. yeah. And at that time, that was quite a hip school. Mm. The only school that I know where Students got paid to come to study. To yeah. Wow. Not and and was this government funded? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Was this? Uh, it was mainly donors. Yeah, mainly um, no, um, Nordic donors. Okay. Swedes. Swedes. But there were, I think there was some money coming from people like Shell. As well. Yeah. Yeah. Did didn't didn't Ezra work for Shell? Ezra worked for one of or BP. BP. Yeah. BP, yeah. Yeah, Ezra and Duke and uh, yeah, and so George, your 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 music and, and I mean I know your 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 background when, because when when I just met you uh, as a possibly a, a matriculant or someone who just passed gone out of high school, your music then was sort of Chick Corea, Miles Davis, uh, that style, and then George. Werner started taking a, a strong interest in South African music. So, and that's because of people like um, playing with Mankunku and, and, jo and, and, and Ezra. Ezra and working at MAP. Yes. At MAP, um, basically, we, we started teaching a lot of South African music. We used, right. we used the, the American material that we show suddenly became available. Right. Which wasn't available back when I was growing up. Yeah. yeah these books like Jamie Abersall. Oh yes. Which they still use at uh, UCT? Yeah, they use all over the world. But those books had all American material. Right. Um, we started notating our own stuff. Fantastic. Because uh, if you go overseas, I always, well, I always felt that the best George Benson is going to be George Benson himself. Of course, of course. Um, when I was playing guitar, the rest of the city was all playing like George Benson. I was That's playing, right. I was trying to find my own stupid way of playing. Yeah. So, if you want to make money as a, an artist, you need to actually play yourself. Yeah. And you also need to play your the music from your country, your city, because you're going to do it better than the American. Correct. And they are going to do the American music better than us. Yeah. Because they grow up with it. It's Absolutely. Really... And the best way to sell yourself is actually to know your own country. And know your roots. roots know yeah. The sounds. In fact, the whole world is still waiting for more sounds to come out of South Africa. I believe that. I believe that. Now, you then became, besides just being a musician, playing with various artists, you, you then started what I know as the Little Giants. Mm. Um, and that has, I mean, you have seen Guys like uh, Luanda Gogwana, um, you name them. I mean, who are who are some of the guys that started? Well, the, the, Chris Engel, didn't he Chris start? Engel, yeah. The very first band had um, Sean Johannes was on bass. So Sean started with the Little Giants. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. He was. He was actually my piano student at the jazz workshop. Okay. And I used to accompany him. On bass, and then one day he, he turned around and said, um, "Can you teach me some bass?" So I said, "Okay, I'll teach you the bass." I think he was he, he was getting lazy. 
<laughs> he wanted to he wanted to go and study right. music. And he but he thought he piano is gonna be too difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to read two clips. Yeah. But you only need to read one <laughs> and you need one with the guitar. <laughs> okay. And then and then he and Sean has become one of South Africa's yeah. top bass players. He, he teaches bass and he teaches something else at UCT at the moment. Yeah. So 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 it was it was um, Sean Johannes, Luanda Gogwana. Um, it is too many. I mean, it but it, it, it would be good to just name a few of them. There's Luanda, there's Sonke Conti. That's right. Chris Engel. Chris Engel. There's a, a boy called Teppo Puani, who's um, Tutu. Well, his brother. Brother. Okay. He's, he's in New York. Did did Tutu ever? Sing with no, the Giants? No. no. She went UCT, eh? Yeah. Now he is in New York. I mean, for him to be based in New York for the past, he's been there since 2005. Didn't Ramon De Brain no. also play no. with the Giants? Because he's also in New York at the moment. Ramon, the bassist. No, no, no. no. Yeah. He's, his cousin was in the band. Claire, Claire. And I often say to her, Are you still yeah. playing your sex? Yeah. So we, uh, this is some kid is Darren English who's in he's, he's now here. But he yes, but he, but he's based in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. So he uh, Darren also yeah. went yeah. through the Giants, a, a season of the Giants. I'm trying to remember all of these characters because there's been, there's been a few. Now there were and two. I, there were two brothers. Uh, a bassist and a piano player. Are they still playing? Um, yeah, Jesse. What's what's his surname? Hen Hendrix? No. Um, Weber. Weber. Yeah. Are they still playing? Kind of in the church or something. Like They're playing in the church. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jesse's studying. Uh, he's studying um, accountancy. And that's quite hectic. Yeah. Well, uh, there's been other. Kids who came through the Little Giants who are no longer doing music, but have become quite successful in their own in their own field. Um, yes, um, we had one Draghi, yeah, who failed uh, grade eleven. He was a bit of a tech cop or something. Like that. Uh. He's completing his his doctorate in physics at the moment in Kentucky. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, and there was one guy, um, one of our main composers in the band, a trombone player, Vuyu uh, Kukushe, mm -hmm. who finished his um, master's in, uh, in business science at Cambridge University. So you, you find these guys... You see, music for me is not uh, just a... Um, it's not an entity all on its own. It, Kind of helps you with other things. No, oh, absolutely, like, absolutely. Um, I mean, people are studying the musical brain now. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I just, uh, I at church uh, for one of my sermons, I used a a video that where a guy was studying the effects that music has on um, patients who have Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and. An amazing uh, discovery was made. Uh, a guy was decrepit in a wheelchair for 10 years of his life, not responding to anything, only opening his mouth, taking his medication. And this guy who was doing the study, did a study on what music he likes, checked with his daughters and his sons what kind of music. They made a, an iPod uh, of, of uh, a selection of music and they put it on his on his headphones and they switched it on and with almost immediate effect this guy came to life he started responding he started singing along and his his, his life has taken i don't even know if he's still alive but his life from then on changed completely because of the power of music and i've seen it with my mother my mother was suffering from, from alzheimer's and my brother she would sit there and she wouldn't know who my brother is, she wouldn't know who I was, and my brother would say to me, just watch, and he'd go and put on a Nat King Cole CD, and he'd turn the volume up, 
and immediately my mom would remember things. She she used to call my brother her husband. Uh, you know, she called Brian Vincent and and things like that. But she started responding to the music, and so I I, I do I firmly believe that music plays a huge role in in I think you know if you want to be good at maths, yeah. go into music, yeah. you know, because it's... it's, um, it's you see, um, people don't realize that music is the only activity, human activity, that covers the whole brain. That's right. So if you lose a portion of your brain, number one, yeah. the other brain also remember music. Correct. My mom also had Alzheimer's. Is it? But she played piano for me. Wow. And she'd remember everything. She, well, the piano, she won't forget. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I worked with Satima B. Benjamin. Correct. She had all the as well. I didn't know that. She used to walk past our venue often yeah. and, and not recognize places and things. She, but she would tell me all these things that happened. From years ago. Years ago, all yeah. this musical stuff. And yeah. She remembered her music. Yeah. And she could sing it for Amazing. Um, this is the other thing about uh, the music, um, because it comes with the whole brain, there's this thing happening all the time. These neurons are sparking across the brain. Yeah. So the hemispheres are kind of more knitted in people, especially kids, yeah. who take up music. That's right. Because uh, the intelligence is about this neurons jumping across. The spheres. Correct. The two hemispheres. And yeah. And it has been, it's been proven that kids will take up um, Plato. Mm. Says that if you were to teach, there's only three things you would teach. Music, philosophy, and physics. But if you were only supposed were to teach one thing, you would teach art, which meant music. Because wow. he says the discipline that you learn in learning music will sort you out with all the other subjects. Aspects, wow. You need to learn music, you need a certain amount of discipline. That's right. Well, I, I, George, you know, I, I've heard and we've, we've staged um, at Kaleidoscope, we've staged Luanda, we've had Sisonki, we've had uh, Darren English, we've had uh, Chris Engel when we were still about well, adult there were guys before them. You're looking at uh, Wayne Bosch. Yes. Well, what, a, what an amazing guitarist. At, at Matt. Matt. At yeah. Peter and Radler. Yeah. Uh, Clement Benny. Um, what's the other guitarist's name? Dead Skippers. Yes. So they, and they, they've all gone on and they, they've all started their own careers. And, and so I want to I wanna just say to you publicly and to whoever watches this video, Thank you for everything that you have done for the musicians of Cape Town and, and even still, you still are working with a lot of musicians. The young Carlo Fabe, mm. um, you know, uh, when, when he gets up there, you know, he's, he can be counted mm. as, a, as, a, as a great drummer. I know he's, he's being used by many other musicians now, but I know I met Carlo through you, I met Peter through you through your trio and uh, you know we, we started out in music together we've gone different parts but here we are back today working together and and I want to just say you know that you have done an amazing job and uh, I would love you to to continue doing it we we are going to be visiting our friend Errol Dyers our common friend Errol Dyers who's not well at the moment uh, has emphysema and so, uh, if you, if we had to end this interview now, and, and I know we spoke a little earlier, but about the hopelessness, not only in South Africa, but the hopelessness in the world. Um, is there a message that you have for young people? Is there a message that you have for people, for young men and women who are desiring to, to study, to go into music, etc., etc.? Um, what would you say what, to inspire them? Mm. You can look at the camera and, and, and tell them. What can I say to inspire them? Mm. 
Man, I, I just feel that you need to really enjoy whatever you're doing. So, it doesn't have to be a chore. Yeah. You don't have to... Um, at the present moment, I, I think a lot of our youth, and this is because the whole world is like that, um, has been put under a lot of pressure yeah. to be successful. Right. And I think in trying to be successful, they actually build up a lot of pleasure on themselves. Correct. When I was growing up, there wasn't that much pleasure. So I could actually do things at, at a more leisurely pace, at a more... Enjoyable. Yeah. Enjoyable. Uh, we, we could yeah. do things yeah. that, that we enjoyed. Um, but I, I think you're right. I think people are under a lot of pressure yeah. to perform. Yeah. Um, and it's not just music. I mean, yes, it's, it's music, man. absolutely. So uh, this is uh, with the little giants. What happened there is I created an environment where the youth can come and have fun. Mm. And at the same time, uh, yeah. But there was no pressure on them and say, hey, listen, you need to. Correct. The only pleasure I put on them is like, we need to finish, have a repertoire of so many tunes done. So that we can, yeah. so that we can perform, absolutely. Yeah. But now they enjoy performing, so it was right, a pleasure. Right. I've just been, something just jolted my memory now. Last year, you took a, or you were part of a contingent that went to the States. Yeah. Uh, you want to just tell us a little bit about what that was and, and what you guys were doing, who, who, initiated it and what was that? Okay, yeah, it's, it was a kind of a joint thing between UWC and the University of Missouri. Right. Um, there is a kind of a twin between those two universities. Some professor, uh, Lee Coker, from Missouri, um, wrote a musical. Okay. Mama Africa. And, and it was about? Marie Makiba. Marie Makiba. So he used Catonians because of the UC, UWC uh, twinning. Yeah. And I ended up being the, the musical director and the guys in the band was basically all my students, most of them. From, from the Little Giants? Little Giants. Okay. And, and then we toured the US and the beginning of this year in January we were at Artscape. Did the same show there? Same show. It was supposed to go to Ray, Lagos in May. Nigeria? Yeah, mm -hmm. in May, but apparently the Nigerians don't want us want South Africans there. Because of the what's happening with the Genocide and, and, yeah. and everything. Yeah. Xenophobia. And Xenophobia, that. sorry. Yeah. So that thing has been candy. But it's going to London in yeah. July and August. And Artscape wants it on a regular basis, annually. Um, but I've, I've done other projects out, out of the country as well. I, I worked with a, a, a company and still do some work with him called Miyagi. Mm. Music is a great investment. And Miyagi takes kids over to Germany, Sweden and so forth, every second or third year or so. And when we took talk, talking about kids, we took about a, a full orchestra, eight, eight piece orchestra. Wow. Yeah, I remember you did that. Did, where, did, did you not go to France? No, that was Germany. That was Germany, yeah. France uh, was another collaboration with Little Giants. And I had some kids from Delft, mm. and we did this collaboration with uh, some professional French musicians. And all these people wanted was some African music. Wow. There is a demand out there. They actually like our, the way we perform. Mm -hmm. These little kids from the townships. Yeah from Hamburg Park, Delft, 
Yeah, so they, that's that's the inspiration. I mean, yeah, George is working with with kids, and 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 if I may, sort of add, uh, the the little giants started out as a a little workshop school for previously disadvantaged kids, but because of how successful it was. Kids from Constantia and Weinberg and Claremont started wanting to become part of the Little Giants. And uh, George didn't say no, he opened it up. And, and in the States they have what they call Magnet School of the Schools of the Arts, where they take kids from a Nova Park or a Mitchell's Plain and they take them into Constantia and they train them up and they give them a different environment to work in. And so that is something that I believe that we need to look at in South Africa um, for the future of South African music. I'm not as educated musically as, as uh, George Werner, but I have a passion for our local musicians. I have a passion for the guys that we've been talking about. Uh, some of them I've had the sad um, pleasure of doing their funerals, the likes of Robbie Jansen, Hotep Idris Galeta, John from JCQ Productions, and that has stirred my passion in terms of how we can equip the youngsters, how we can teach young artists, George, to turn their gift into a business. Because I, I, I believe that many musicians have not been equipped enough to be able to take or translate the gifting that they have and turn it into a successful uh, um, business and what happens is you get managers or management to come along and they manage you and they manage your money and at the end of the day you end up with nothing and the managers go on and become wealthy. We've had the sad story of Red Angel who I also did the funeral of and Red Angel had videos that were shot in Venice, it was shot in France, and it was played all around the world. And yet, there was no finance available to even do his funeral. And we as a church subsidized the funeral. And so, I want to say, uh, I hope that George Werner lives much longer. I want to hope that he has many many more i know there was the little giants then there was the baby giants and uh, so i'm hoping that this legacy that you are going